It's Cardinals time. The best part of podcasts is nobody can see your boner. Do it live. Fuck well, it. I'll pop in. Whoa. Sucking thing fucks. Hey, everybody. Kyrie's here. I know I get it. What? I know I get it in when I when I hear you, like, subduing your chortles during the rest of the intro. I know that I, I live. Uh-oh. <laughs> he said balls. Hey, everybody. And balls. Kyrie's here and balls. I'm willing to hang out with you. For this week's edition of Kyrie's Boy. podcast, we're a minute into this podcast and I haven't even said who I am yet, so we're off to a great start. It looks like it's a big mystery on the Kyrie channel who it is. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, this is Kyrie's Cards Cast uh, for the 2016 NFL season, alongside the one and only Brian Lutz. How are you doing today, Lutz? Brian Lutz here, hanging out with you. Boy, oh boy. Boy, oh boy. Are we going to have big fun today? Ow! Um, <laughs> all right. Say some shit about football, dude. Let's go, man. People got shit to do. Football! Don't y'all, people. All right, so let's talk about football. Dude, don't just... No, okay, yelling football does not constitute uh, saying shit about football. football! Um, all right, let's talk Do you about... think freaking Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner got his career on the like, NFL Network by just going, okay, guys. Football! Yes, I, Good I, believe, I believe that was his audition tape because the folks over there we'll, already we'll, knew who we'll he was. We'll see you Thursday night. <laughs> Listen. All right, go. Okay. Fucking go, dude. I wanna, I wanna talk about about football. We got a lot to cover today. Uh, the biggest things I wanna talk about, obviously, being the bullshit that happened on Sunday Night Football. Uh, Arizona Cardinals. All right, good. We, we got that. We got that out of the way. We talked about it. It's out of the way. All right, let's go. Move on <laughs> to the next subject. The next topic. The San Francisco 49ers are at the top of the division. Deal with that. That's not topic. Dude, not only are they in top of the division, they're like pinning the division down right now and rubbing a wiener on it. You know what? If I can you, use. Do you know what's, what? You know what's, You know I. I. Um. Okay. There was a stat that said the. Um, the Los Angeles Rams still haven't scored a point since 1993 or something like that. I know, like 94, yeah. Isn't that so great? It... But it's, I, I swear, I chalk it up to, like, Chip Kelly. Because, to me, it's just like, it's the experience of going to Disneyland. I just thought of this analogy. Tell me if you like it. Going to Disneyland versus working at Disneyland. Because it's like, he shows up, he's so, like, kind of charismatic and quirky that if you've been doing some like gritty or like uh, Jim Tom Sula-esque kind of like lame sort of empty coaching rhetoric bullshit and like not really inspired by the guys. And then Chip Kelly shows up with like his bedoozles and his bajazzies and like playing all the humpy thumpy music like during practices and everybody's kind of like, yeah, this is new, this is different. You know, and Chip's like a big Doritos guy and like is in the commercials and he's got that going is for he, him. Is he and really? so like. Dude, Chip and Doritos. Think about it, Chip. Well, Kelly. Yeah, but... It's only a matter. Of, it's only a, yeah. It's only a matter of time till there's Kelly flavored Doritos. What are those so gonna like, taste you get like? it. Success. <laughs> short term success. Anyway, all I'm saying is short term success because it like gets the players kind of like excited about what's happening, but then after a while, you, know, you kind of like you, you, the luster wears off and you, it's sort of. What I, I just I'm saying what he uses to inspire people kind of wears off after a little bit. So when you're like three seasons in with him, you're kind of like over the hajuzies and the bajazzles. Wait, wait, wait a second. Which I wait think, a second. Do you think that's why he was so successful in college? Because he only got the guys for a couple of years. There you go, man. It's all, it actually sounds like we scripted this, but we're pretending like we didn't. We really didn't. You we, just no, really had that to, same revelation of swear to God. of the next point. Yeah, oh, the next point that I was going to say, that's why he was so successful in college, and that's why guys like Jim Harbaugh actually also are. Because Harbaugh's kind of got the same thing, but in a different slant, where it's not like fun, it's like intense, like, grittiness. But then you get to, like, graduate out of that and then become a professional with a kind of more professionally paced experience, 
And so that's kind of what happened in San Francisco with Harbaugh. It was like people, I guess, got over him and his overly, like, Uncle Rico intensity with it. And this one wanted kind of like a more normal, like, even-keeled guy in, like, a long-tenured professional setting. And so, like, that's what I'm saying with Chip Kelly. It's, like, exciting at first, but if you're doing, like, a dime, like, 10 years on this coach, like, it'd be tough to keep the face on. It's kind of like working at Disneyland, you know? It's like, after a while, it's like, I fucking hate the It's a Small World ride. I never want to see those gnomes again. I've never been to Disneyland, so I'm going to have not to call, it. Not calling Chip Kelly a gnome. That wasn't any type of Freudian association. Yeah, anyway, that's my that take. Thing. So um, yeah, the so Niners are just going to be excited to have like a charismatic guy there at the helm. It'll let's, be let's a burst. Not, let's, not, let's not understate. Let's not understate. the. I, I don't want to give all the credit to the Niners. Uh, Jeff Fisher's suckitude deserves a lot of credit, yeah. and the reason that oh, the Rams yeah, didn't yeah. score a point. Like, let, let's not take it's like, away from Jeff yeah. Fisher. They're, they're at the inverse coaching environment as the Niners right now, where they <laughs> literally are just like, <laughs> that they're wits then with this yeah, guy. And the Crockies gave him an extension, a big one. What did he get, like six years or something? Like, they, they really oh, no, want to keep about. Jeff Fisher. I, 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 for the life of me, cannot figure how... Okay, Jeff Fisher had one Super Bowl run, and they lost to the Rams. Everyone knows that. Fucking Ken Wisenhunt had one Super Bowl run where he lost, too. I don't see him parlaying that into a decade of coaching eight and eight teams. It's just not, not well, going to happen. I think the Rams are kind of like, obviously, we're just a, a floundering franchise. And, hey, I'm the one on the podcast here. But what are the circumstances with that extension they gave Jeff Fisher? I mean, obviously, he can be fired still, right? Even course, though he's still yeah. under contract. Well, yeah, of course he can be fired, but there's a bunch of guaranteed money that's, like, tied up in him that it would make it very expensive to fire it's... someone and pay him to not be your coach, basically. Yeah. That's what it's about. Because I still see, like, I think that was just to make sure that... Oh, dude, I just shot lotion, like, all over my belly. This is so weird right now. I feel so dirty. I'm trying to feel clean. <laughs> anyway, so, like, I, it's... Yeah, I think he just wanted to make sure Jeff Fisher stayed there while every th all the transition was going on, and then in the process of worrying, two, they give him two years, give him a year, give him three years. Why? The, I think I think they yeah, gave him I six know. years. I think they just thought they were going to actually compete with other teams for I him, but so that was too. stupid. And I, I, I think I think that's what they thought too. Let's uh, we we unfortunately we do need to talk about the Cardinals game. I mean, we're several minutes in, and we haven't even brought up that fucking travesty. But we do need to talk about it uh, a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to run through some stuff and I'm going to get Lutz's reaction to it. Uh, Brandon Williams, not ready for prime time. Lutz, tell him why. Because he's a running back that they are playing corner. Uh -huh. So here, but here's, here's my concern with that. Bruce Arians and Steve Kime in the bunch felt like he was their best option for cornerback. Does that say something more about the availability of cornerbacks or the Bruce well, we Arians? Well, we just, we just signed that guy today, you know. I missed it. He didn't me. know. I missed it. Tell me. <laughs> Could we, hold on. Let me find my app where I have the, 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 the details. Hold on, my app. Hold on. He, so we got my app phone. got too. There, Jer, Thorold Simon. He, He's, was, uh, he was cut by the... The Seahawks. Yeah, the Hawks. The Seahawks. They got he, on waivers. It was really, I heard, did you hear, like, the write-up on him? How they just said he sucked really bad, basically. The guy we just picked up? Yeah. they just like, he can't do this, this, and that, but he could start in the right system. I well, don't know. I well, guess there's, see, quote, unquote, if you have Brandon Williams as your other cornerback, you yeah. could probably start in that system. Yeah. I, um, it makes me miss Gerard, dude, and I didn't know that I was gonna miss Gerard Powers, but like you I, don't miss Gerard, bro. That's I do. Just, uh, yeah. uh, you don't I, miss it. You I, don't. I do. I miss Gerard Powers right now, dude. After after what I saw uh, out of Brandon Williams on opposite the, on the other side of Patrick Peterson, I do miss Gerard. Now here's the next thing I want to talk about. Long snapper got a lot of shit for that last snap of the game. Let me tell you what, it wasn't great, and it was a bad snap or whatever. But um, it wasn't like th that wasn't the reason that the kick was no good. There was a, I mean, all things considered, that kick was makeable even with the bad snap. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna put that on a. On it's a, not on any of them, man. It's not. It's not. To me, it's not on any of them. I mean, the game should not have been based yeah. on that field goal. Yeah. 
Yeah, why the it's hell? On the def- it's, on the, it's on the defense, man. Like the third down, 10 to 16, oh, third down. You, they you know what else? You want to know something else about that 10 of 16? Eight of them were third and five or longer. So Yeah, exactly. There's like third and 11s, third and 15s, like critical ones. And what I... I wasn't fortunate enough to get to watch the whole game. I'm out of market. Like I watched like the end of it, like the fourth quarter, I should say, which oh. is awesome. I got to see the David Johnson run. Oh, you the, know, but the crazy one. That was awesome. That was so amazing. I was screaming in the bar, and people were just like, "We just popped in in the fourth quarter, and obviously nobody else was like glued to the game." And all of a sudden, all the, like the Asian owners and everything are like, "Er," when somebody seemed suddenly very excitedly interested in what was happening on the TV. Um, but I, I don't know, man. Like, there is so much blown shit. Like, the defense not making tackles, um, just to name some things. Bruce Arians calling out Justin Bethel's. Oh! Calling dude. out Justin Bethel the way I call out Gerard Powers. And like, you know you what? Really and, see and, that. and you know what? Uh, yeah, well, pl- coaches never call players out by name, except Bruce Arians will do it. You know who else got called out? Fucking Dietschy, man. Uh, because. Uh, the yeah, Deech yeah. got called out. According to Bruce Arians, the only noteworthy thing he did in the game was get a penalty. Like, other than that, Robert Kandichi didn't do anything noteworthy. And- I, okay, I'm going to bring up something that I think we're both going to be pretty uninformed on. So why I'm going to bring it up here on this forum of a permanently recorded podcast, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> let me just do it for fun. So uh, apparently at Ole Miss, where Kandichi came uh, where we got him, he he played zone defense, or he excelled in their zone schemes. Is like what I've heard, and the, like his um, Alabama tape when he played that school, like looks really really great because they played like zone schemes. And I don't know if it's a way that that scheme matches up against a specific type of offense. Also, I just don't like. I've heard he had trouble in their man coverage schemes. Again, like he he just kind of disappeared in that tape. Now, I don't know if you like have any comment on that. I just want to throw that out there for people that may have not heard that before, or if anybody has, if you have like more insight, because it doesn't sound like schematically he was a great fit. It might have just been like his athleticism that really attracted us to him and his availability at such a high value so late, you know. So anyway, uh, well, we don't play a lot of zone defense. Um. Larry Fitzgerald did some cool shit. Uh, obviously, he got touchdowns number 99 and 100 uh, in a loss, unfortunately. But it just goes Shaking to show, yeah, Fitz ain't, ain't, ain't lost a step. Um, they did a list of the quarterbacks who have thrown those touchdown, the 100 touchdown passes. Lutz, do you know a, a noteworthy Cardinals quarterback who has never, who had never thrown? A touchdown pass to Larry Fitzgerald. First of all, here's the thing. In order of, like, number of touchdown passes thrown to Fitz, John Skelton was number four. He's thrown the fourth most touchdown passes to Larry Fitzgerald. Um, Isn't that something? I know! Well, yeah, and, and I, I know that's super great. Where did Kevin Cobb rank on that? I didn't actually see, like, the... Well, I heard the noteworthy ones. But I didn't see the pecking order where, like, Kevin Cobb landed I didn't, on I, that. I, I, was, I didn't catch it either, but obviously he's thrown several. He's such a, like... But... But before we like run away from your thing you brought up, I actually do know the answer to that. And I just want to point out how silly it is to me that Brian St. Pierre, guys like even Derek Anderson, but he had a lot of starts to go yeah. and compete for this. But the, fa- the fact that our own boy, Drew Stanton, has not tossed that sucker into Larry's hands for a touchdown, right? it's very surprising. He but I will like say that. Season. But let me just say, what has Drew Stanton actually kind of always been known for, where he's been said to excel even beyond Carson Palmer? The what? long ball. The long ball. The long ball. Drew Stanton throws fucking cruise missiles down the field. So when you're looking for cruise missiling into the end zone, he's targeting Michael Floyd. He's targeting John Brown. Fair. If, if, this, if this was 2008, he probably would have hit No, he, he didn't get JJ. He didn't get JJ. That's right. That would have been last year, and he didn't really do that last year. So, yeah. But he did, he did have Jerron Brown, although I, I can't cite specific you know, events between them. But I do remember Tree Stan and Michael Floyd having a good connection and some John Brownage in there. But, yeah, because of that, no fits. Weird, huh? Weird. I, I was definitely taken aback by that. 
I, 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 I know, me I had, too. I really hadn't thought about it much, but it, I was. Those are some learning. gritty ass games, though. Those are some gritty oh. ass games, oh, if you remember. You, yeah, no, I do remember, man. It was, it was that that I, one that sticks out to me was the Lions game where we won fourteen to six. We scored twice in the yeah, first quarter, exactly. and then never again. And our defense just held the Lions to six points, and that's why we won. It was. It, I was at uh, that, that game. That was actually. the one that came to mind with the Michael Floyd connections because they were both like two, like 50-50 balls in the end zone, and both just thrown so weird. Like they both just relied so heavily on Michael Floyd just being a bigger athlete than the defender, and just like catch the ball up in front of him and doing it against the Lions helped a little bit too. Um, be the Lions right. secondary. Or that, let me adjust something. All right, uh, let's talk about the next thing on the list. Turn that uh, turn that garbage off. <laughs> no, I like it. I've been on a garbage kick lately, in case you guys can't tell. Um, uh, at work, this is pretty much all I listen to are Garbage's first three albums. I listen to them on rotation over and over again, and they're fucking great, dude. I love that shit. All right. Yeah, um, your, music, your music selection is garbage. Uh, <laughs> that actually, this is true. My playlist for work is the three garbage albums, the Final Fantasy Tactics original <laughs> soundtrack, and the Final Fantasy three NES soundtrack. That's what I have on my playlist right now. So those. Dude, are the... you might be the biggest nerd on this podcast. <laughs> might be though. That's the thing is you haven't ruled yourself out. So, um, okay, let's Stop talk. Let's talk about Chandler Jones. Uh, Chandler Jones did some cool stuff. I mean, he wasn't exactly all over the place but you definitely saw what it was that we we were looking to get when we got Chandler Jones so I'm I'm excited about what he's gonna do as he settles in more into his role as a pass rusher I feel like Chandler Jones is gonna have a dynamite year uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of him did he and Tyvon Branch really start dancing y yeah oh it was I don't think it was was it Branch I don't think it, I don't remember who it was, but yeah, dude, and they got the penalty. And Bruce Arians straight up said, "The next time that happens, you're off the team. Like if you do that shit again, a choreographed, yeah, yeah. pre-planned dance. Like it's one thing to stand up and like strut a little bit, but to like have a pre-planned ritual, like a choreographed ritual that you do, is against the rules, and it costs us 15 yards. So I don't know. So stupid. Yeah, he said something happened that has not happened here, and it will not happen again. Yeah, he's not going to cut Chandler Jones, obviously, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Jones does something like that again. He might get, like, benched for a series or something. I mean, he's that's not, so stupid. He's not going like, to cut he's, him. He's not going to sit him. He's, he's, gonna... he's playing against the team that traded him, and in an uh, like apparent attempt to taunt them, ends up getting his team penalized in a critical way when your team lost by a fucking field goal. Yep. Yeah, like, no. on a third down or whatever. I don't know what down it was, but it was just like... Yeah, it's just so kind of asinine to have it backfire like that. It kind of looks stupid, like running into a police station high on weed or I something. I think I think it was I think it was on a turnover. I think it was on like a fumble or something. I, maybe it was a sack. I don't remember exactly. Honestly, a lot of that game was so troubling for me. I don't really care too much about it. But uh, the next thing I want to talk about is fucking Drew Butler, dude. Oh my! There is no way. I, I refuse to believe that there is not a better punter uh, somewhere else on planet Earth who could take his place. Drew Butler is a fucking joke at punter, dude. He's giving us, he gives us like 19-yard punts and shit. I don't, I don't understand. I seriously don't get how he is a starting punter in the National Football League. He is... Yeah. He has been so unreliable. Every now and then he'll bust off an amazing punt and you're like... Holy shit, that's really good. But like, then you remember, oh, every punt is supposed to be like that for a, a pro punter. This isn't fucking college or high school where you're still trying to find your 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 leg or whatever. By the time you hit the NFL, you need to be one of the 32 best punters on the planet. And Drew Butler is not. There is somebody better that has that's been cut or on. I don't know. I guess they don't really keep punters on a practice squad. But there is somebody better than Drew Butler out there that we could sign. And like, I don't understand why we're not doing it. What the hell is Dave Zastin yeah, Bruce, Let's call him. Bruce Harris made some funny comment. He's like, well, I mean, if you lose, if you lose a punter, then you lose a holder, too. Like, mentioning the other skill sets involved in punting and making sure it's like... You can find a lot of people to hold the football, too. I don't know. Probably, probably anybody on that team 
probably do that. Well, he just sucks as a yeah. goddamn holder, too. He sucks as a hold. He sucks as a goddamn holder, too. Okay? <laughs> he doesn't do anything well. I don't. I honestly, for the life of me, and you know what? I miss Ben Graham, and that guy was an asshole. I read a story about Ben Graham. Somebody came up to, like, like he was golfing or something, and, like, this one dude recognized him as being, like, the punter from the Cardinals and went up to, like, ask for an autograph, and, like, Ben Graham totally just, like, like cussed him out and dicked him on his way. He's like, get the fuck out of here, or however Australians talk. And tell him, like, you know, he wasn't interested in signing his shit or talking to him about football. I get that the dude I have a Ben. I have a Ben Graham autograph. Do you? <laughs> yeah. I have, a, I have a 2011 team ball. Uh, with Ben Graham's it's name on 20... it? Yeah. Okay. Um... Was he, he was on the team then, please say he was. Probably, he probably was. I don't remember exactly. Oh, uh, well, I swear, I swear. Okay, let me go look it up. Anyway, you keep talking about stuff. Why don't you do that? Uh, no, I, 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 that's basically all I wanted to say about the game. Carson looked average at best. Uh, he didn't look great, but he didn't exactly look terrible. There were a couple of balls that he threw that should have been picks. There was one play... Okay, the chemistry was just missing. Let me let me break this down for you, Lutz. I don't know if you know about this one, but here's what happened. And I was watching this live when it happened. Um, Palmer drops back to pass. Floyd goes, like, long, like on a go route. Um, and he's going and going, and Palmer throws the ball, like, 10 yards behind Floyd. And I'm thinking, okay, somebody did something wrong here. Floyd was either supposed to curl back or Palmer was supposed to lead Floyd with the ball. Why did he put it 10 yards behind him? A ball hits the turf, whatever, incomplete pass. It turns out the play that they had drawn up was a, a comeback route, like a curl route. Floyd was supposed to uh, come back around and, and catch the pass. But what had happened was he beat his uh, defender so bad off the snap that Floyd was like, holy shit, I'm going to get a touchdown right now. I'm hitting the go route. I'm calling an audible after the snap. So Floyd went for the go route, counting on Palmer to see him running downfield and lead him with it rather than going with the original play. So there was just a lack of chemistry. And receivers do that sometimes. If they see an opportunity, they do that sometimes. Uh, it's just if you have good chemistry with your quarterback, the quarterback will know what you're doing and he'll, he'll put the ball where it needs to go. And uh, that was just a lapse in chemistry because Floyd didn't do anything wrong by going for it. And Palmer didn't do anything wrong by going where the ball was originally supposed to go. But it just didn't fucking pan out. And, like, there was a couple know, Palmer, of those. He just sort of, I don't know, it's like he bricks up under pressure. Like, pressure in that game to, like, win it. Like, because now they have to win it. They're nine and a half point favorites on New England. And he just bricks up. I don't know what the deal is. Some people got paid on that some, shit, dude. Some, some dudes in Vegas fucking cleaned house on that one. God, how did we yeah. lose a gift-wrapped game? I got a gripe about something real quick. There, uh, there, there, okay, I don't know the dude's name. I don't know the dude's name. I gotta, I gotta look him up on Reddit real quick. Uh, because I don't know what his name is. But I, 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 I want to ask for your opinion on a sentiment that he, um, that he, uh, put, put forth here and see what, uh, what, what you think about it. I, well, I can't find it, but his name is like Ed the Gar or something. E-D-T-H-E-G-A-R or something like that. And he's known around the the subreddit for being a dick and just, like, being a dick. He's basically like Brian Lutz, like another Brian Lutz. Like, we need more of those. And, um, hey, fuck you. Uh, what he said was that uh, he'll, he is willing to admit that he is pleased when opposing players get hurt. Russell Wilson gets injured, and he said, yeah, I'm glad he got hurt. I like that. That makes me happy. I'm excited to see that Russell Wilson has gotten hurt. Uh, you know, uh, he, and most people's reaction is like, oh, what the fuck, dude, that's fucked up to say that Russell Wilson's a person with like a family and a life. And, uh, you know, he has to, you know, kids or whatever. I don't know if he has kids, but the point is, is that you're, you're wishing bodily harm on another human being that's messed up. And it, and I kind of see where he's coming from. He's not wishing bodily harm on Russell Wilson. He's wishing that Russell Wilson won't take the field when the Seahawks play us. Uh, it doesn't matter how that has to happen. Injuries happen in football, and if they happen and they happen to benefit us, is it so bad to take pleasure in the benefit that we gain? Not pleasure in the fact that a human being is hurt, but rather pleasure in the fact that we will now benefit by this. And while I might agree that it's okay to take pleasure in that, 
the point is kind of moot because we can't fucking win against backup quarterbacks. So, like, what's the goddamn difference, right? So, I will say, it is always okay to get excited and happy when Russell Wilson gets injured. That's on or off the football field. He's a special case. He makes himself a target. He also wanted you to know that he did have sex with Ciara, his wife. Literally advertise that on his social media, just so you know. So it's okay to want him to get hit by a truck or push down some stairs or, you know, maybe a concussion in the game. But I think there's something to say that your team has to be good, too. So while you might get a couple bumps or advantages by some of this or that guy getting hurt, unless it's like a quarterback of your opponent in the Super Bowl suddenly unable to play in the Super Bowl, I don't really know. Like, you have to show me that you we're not going to win the game otherwise and that that game was pivotal in, like, your success or your championship quest or whatever. Because, like you said, we can't win against backup sometimes. And the only thing that, like, First of all, you have so much tape on the starting quarterback. You can, like, get into this guy's head so well at knowing, like, what he does in so many different circumstances. You don't have that benefit with backups. All of a sudden, your guys are playing really tight and, like, not tight as in good, but, like, you know, they're they're more on edge about, like, just the unknown now. And that gets exploited, and we see that happen with our team in particular all the time. All of a sudden, like, it's like our defense is so game planning that if all of a sudden we're just playing on our feet and, like, by ear, it's like the, if the academic component of it is unavailable, the raw athleticism and just tenacity seems to not always, like, cover the gap there. So... Well, yes, if you if it seems like an injury has improved our chances at winning a championship, I'll take that. It just I don't that's not always so obvious or so provable to me. Okay, Plus, so is it but is it I don't I don't, I don't like to feel like you steal anything either. So Is it but is I'd it I hate to think that the other team was better and that we only beat them because of an injury. That's okay, but is it lame. is it messed up? Is it messed up to get excited when you see an opposing player get seriously injured and like carted off the fields it messed up to be a little bit giddy inside and think holy shit we're gonna giddy. win this game i laughed a lot when teddy bridgewater went down in rg3 and neither of those had anything to do with the cardinals i mean the vikings might end up having something to do with that down the road in the postseason hunt but the browns it's just pretty irrelevant how they're going to impact arizona season so why it was it was like amusing i think is the best word for me when there's like a meme component to like somebody's injury um but i don't like quarterbacks going down unless it's like andrew luck but even that like i thought the same thing about schittsburg like Landry Jones going down. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I fucking oh man, dude. Uh, I I really I was so excited when I I felt guilty to feel excited, but I was happy to see Michael Vick go down and some third string nobody come in. And I'm thinking, holy shit, we're already in control of this game against uh, Michael Vick, who's a pretty good quarterback. We're gonna completely destroy these guys when some other asshole comes out there. And the other asshole was Landry Jones, and we all know how that worked out. But they had what? Dude, didn't they have, like, two yards of offense or something crazy, weirdly bad when Michael Vick was still in? So, I mean, if you think about it, things could have only gotten better for them. So I don't know what it was that we were wanting to change about that game. or I know, yeah, we should should have been like, just don't mess with anything. Keep it like it is, right? Just don't fuck with it. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. I, I felt like we were winning that game with Michael Vick there. Because we are so in control of what their offense is doing. But then once that unknown came into it, all of a sudden it was like any other defense and every other defense seemed to beat the brakes off Landry Jones. But it's just for some reason because we didn't know we were going to have to deal with that guy. He just walked all over us. You can't, it kind of embarrassed us. So ultimately when it comes down to it, uh, in my estimation, like it's, it's, oh, it's okay It's okay to be, like, excited about your team having an advantage, but I still do recognize that these are human beings that have a life outside of football, and a guy busting up his knee means he's not going to be able to play with his kid because he's going to be not able to stand up and shit, and, you know, he's not going to be able to be the person off the field 
that he normally would be. And who knows what impact it's going to have on him someday when he retires. So I do still Man, feel with the injured. They actually have time to play with their kid then, instead yeah. of just being like That's true. Is that tied up in the training game? all the time. And I don't. I don't feel bad as long as it's not like an injury. I mean, concussions bother me. Like if I see yeah. like those kids on Cam Newton. If Cam Newton went out of the game because he got knocked out, that would. I didn't feel good about seeing Cam Newton getting whomped on by Denver, but. Yeah. If it's like a knee injury or something, that's not really going to affect your like longer term like health health. Like you're not going to die or get dementia from a knee injury. Like the way that it might diminish your quality of life in the future would not at all offset the benefit that you had from having an NFL career. So like those kinds of things don't. Bother. That's why Teddy Bridgewater, RG three, they're still talking about it. like, yeah, my knees got fucked up, it sucks. I'll come back and rehab and do better. But you have a guy like John Brown who's just like, go oh, away. You know, like those are kind of like two different things to me. So. All right. Well, now I. I as long as it's not I, serious. I gotta say something to Larry Fitzgerald. That's my message to Fitz right there. So. Uh, Lutz will know what that message is later. Um, so let's talk about, are there any other games over the week that you wanted to talk about at all, uh, Lutz? Um, obviously Steelers did what they do, handled the skins. Everyone knows that. Uh, the Eagles. Oh, wait, I thought the skins, hold on. I thought the skins had Josh Norman now, and so they're going <laughs> to no, shut out no, all of their opponents. No, dude, no, Josh Norman was a non-factor, man. Um. <laughs> Uh, well, the I guess when you don't play your best, I guess if you're not playing your best cornerback against the other team's best receiver, they tend to be factored out of the game sometimes. Uh, Antonio they, Brown is not being covered by Josh Norman. I just want to put that out there. I don't know. I don't know who's who game plan that, but um, the Eagles looked pretty goddamn good. Uh, I wasn't expecting yeah, that. Yeah, a different kind of good than I. I don't know. I don't think that the Eagles. I think that they're happy to be under a new regime and new people to answer to and looking forward to just being athletes, going to work, grinding, you know, working things out. So I'm excited to see what they do. And I think what's really intriguing about the Eagles, not that they've ever had a good defensive back unit to begin with, but that their front seven on their defense is like, like significantly good this year. It's kind of surprising and it doesn't look fluky either. Those guys are like really beast in it it's funny it's because i was really high on the eagles uh last season if you remember and then i i didn't quite factor in the wearing off of the chip hype train but now that like i don't know i, I think the eagles are actually poised for maybe a surprise season but unfortunately the giants have the nfc east unlocked this year think so yeah i do are you only saying that because your wife is a crazy giants fan no, I'm, I'm not, actually. I'm not. They beat the Cowboys to start it off, and, like, I don't... We, let's not talk about the Giants, but that's my NFC East prediction, anyway. Okay. Um, okay, Giants. so you're ready to move on to some Lutz Locks? Yeah. Okay. Lutz Rocks. Let me start the Lutz Locks music. It's the... Lutz uh, Rocks. Lutz Locks. A bit of bear. Okay. Let me play that again. Let me turn it up and play it again. Lutz Locks. Ooh, that was Lutz so Rock. I don't care, though. Um, all right. Firing up the sunglasses guy music. Here we go. All right. <laughs> okay, let's... Sal Incognito here. <laughs> let's get started it, with this, dude. We're going to start with uh, um, the Thursday night game. Jets, Bills. Yeah. Jets versus Bills, an AFC East showdown for who's going to be in third and fourth place. You got the Jets and the Bills. Oh, you're going to have to give me Toddly Bowls. Give me some Jets. Yeah, yeah I, I, I feel that one. Um, let's see. All yeah, right, Jets pick. Uh, I think we got uh, next, we got the Niners at Carolina. Mm, got the Niners going out to Carolina. Take on them Panthers. Niners looking to shore up some. <laughs> the fucking Niners are going to win, dude. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Panthers... I'm going to be staying. Yeah. The Panthers are going to open Luke's up 0-2. The Panthers are going to open up 0-2. 
Loot slots. Okay, it's Loot says so. Uh, and then we got the 0-1 Cowboys going to take on the 0-1 Washington Racial Slurs. Ooh, doggy, an old West Classic. Got the Cowboys taking on them engines. I love it. Give me the Cowboys like usual. Yeah. I think the Cowboys are going to win, and then the Redskins, we're all going to laugh at everybody. We're going to say, gonna you like that. Like We're going to say you like that. Odell Beckham Jr. is going to make a comment about people who play in the defensive backfield on the Redskins. Okay. It'll be um, a good time. A good time. All right. We got, all right. We, got we got the Bengals going to uh, Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Uh, how quickly does Vontez Burfecht yeah. take Ben Roethlisberger out of the game? So yeah, the Steelers are going to have seven people. Seven people end up on injury reserve. Vontez Perfect slapped with a five thousand dollar fine. <laughs> Bengals confirmed AFC North champions. Uh, Saints going oh, to right. Saints going to the the Say who just I, outside the Big Apple to take on the New York Gents. Just to make sure my pick is actually locked and registered, um, the Steelers are going to win that game. And then that Saints game, well, the Giants are going to win that game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dolphins taking on uh, Jimmy Garoppolo and the New England Deflatriates. Mm-hmm. Another AFC East showdown. We got the Patriots taking on the Dolphins. And what's better known as the Patriots Dolphin ride. Patriots got this one. Mm-hmm. Three touchdowns. Easy. Garoppolo. <laughs> Chiefs going to take on. You know, okay, here's an interesting history tidbit for you. Before moving to Kansas City and being named the Chiefs, the Chiefs used to play in Dallas, and they were known as the Dallas Texans. Uh, They're traveling to Houston to take on the Houston Texans. Who wins that one, Lutz? Ooh, we got name jacking, and we got crack a and Chiefs come down and steal their name back. Be the Kansas City Texans. Give me the Chiefs slash Texans. Ooh. Um, the uh, Tennessee... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm about it. A Tennessee going up to the Motor City Mad Men Detroit Lions. Who wins that one, Lutz? Tell them. Yeah. Ooh, we got Malarkey taking the boys, Mariota, and other people. Wait, no, they have actually people on the, the Titans now. And they're going to take on the Lions, Calvin Johnson's Lions uh, in spirit. And so I think it's going to be Tennessee Titans. Uh, Baltimore Ravens go into Cleveland to take on the world's, uh, least lucky franchise, the Cleveland Browns. Ravens. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks are going to Los Angeles to take on, uh, Give me uh, them gigantic Seahawks, yeah. Hang on, let me explain who they're going to play. They're going to play, uh, the one-time NFC champion, or AFC champion, Jeff Fisher, uh, Head coach of the Rams, who was an AFC champion once. You know, it's so funny. It's like, he's like in this quote where they're asking him about uh, like strategy for the season or something. He's just like, I don't want to be seven and six anymore. I don't want to be six and ten. I don't want to be eight and eight. I don't want to be nine and seven. Hell, I don't even want to be ten and six. I know what I'm doing. And then they were talking about how the Niners defense would know the Rams play from the offense. The moment the ball was snapped, just by watching the offensive like <laughs> scheming and the movements they started making, and so people were just like, "Yeah, Jeff, it looks like everybody knows what you're doing. The Niners knew what you were doing. Everybody knows what you're doing. I know what I'm doing." Um, Jeff uh, Fisher, dude, I know what I'm doing. He's he's gonna go 0 oh, 16 this year, bro. It's oh without boy, a doubt. I can't wait. Uh, Jaguars going to San Diego to take on the Chargers. <laughs> Jags. Uh, Atlanta Falcons go into Oakland. They're going to play the Raiders. The, ooh, give me them Raiders. Give me them Raiders. Oh, this yeah. will be an interesting matchup. Um, the first time since 1993 that the Colts and Broncos have played each other and Peyton Manning was not involved. Uh, the Colts are going to Denver to take on the Broncos. Oh, that's a marquee game if I ever heard one. Andrew Luck facing his former ex quarterback's former team. Mm. <laughs> Give me the Broncos. Um, Green Bay Packers heading to Minnesota to take on Sam Bradford and the Vikings. 
You mean NF- reigning NFC North champion Vikings? <laughs> <laughs> me Green Bay. Um, the Squeagles are going to uh, Chi Town to play against the Bears. Ooh, I want to overhype the Bears again, but I gotta come down to Earth. I'm gonna give it to the Eagles. Yeah, dude. Eagles. Honestly, honestly, dude. Red Ghost mentioned this, and I'm gonna jump on that uh, same train. Jay Cutler is a liability. All right, let's just say that. Jay Cutler is your okay, liability, Chicago. Look, look, he, he, he's on the caboose of that train because the front of that train is miles ahead at this point. Because, um, like, that's been a train we've been on for a while. I, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on it. Count me in on the, uh, I'm on the caboose, too. I'm dragging behind Well, it. just to, like, quickly digress, I mean, he looks good under Adam Gase's offense, but then so again, so like, but so does Blake Bortles. Um... Last Wait, game, no, I mean Ryan Tannehill. Last game that we have Ryan not Tannehill. yet called. Uh, Let me, great, delete that, delete that where I said the wrong team, the wrong guy's name. Okay, uh, let, let's go on to the final game that we have not yet called. The final score when the Tampa Bay Jameis Winstons come to Glendale, Arizona to take on your Arizona Cardinals. Give me Jabulins. What? I'm taking Tampa Bay, dude. I'm going to go against the Cardinals this year. That's gonna be my my angle. Uh, uh, pick against Arizona every 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 time. You're kicked off the podcast, dude. You you just you just gave your permanent spot to we came as bears. What? We Do came- you really think that we have the ability, the talent, and the coaching to beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Super Bowl champions? <laughs> Let me tell you something, dude. Jameis Winston wasn't looking too bad, okay? Let me. Here's a point that they made on. No, I, I know. On, I, I'm not. I'm like, they're good. That's. I was actually kind of picking them because the Cardinals just made me mad by how bad they didn't want to not okay. be. Okay, but here, so here's, like, a, here's a point that they made. Here's a point that was made. Okay, five years from now, uh, they're they're not gonna be any Bra- uh, Tom Brady, no more Drew Brees. Um, I, uh, I, no more Carson Palmer who had an MVP caliber season last year and hopefully we'll have another one right now. Uh, Peyton Manning's already gone. So five years from now, that whole group of guys that have been carrying the NFL for the last 10 to 15 years, they're going to be gone, right? There are no more of those guys. So then, no uh, who, what, what quarterbacks of this class do you envision will be the elite, like five quarterbacks in the league? Cam Newton probably, right? Um, J- is, J- oh, is. is Jameis Winston in there? Cam Newton is already in that tier. Okay. He's probably the biggest bridge. James Winston, yeah, I would definitely put him in there. Um, Russell Wilson? I kind of like, I don't, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Russell Wilson's already there. That's what I'm saying. Russell Wilson is already probably, now that Peyton Manning is retired, like, I can't say he isn't the most recognizable QB. I mean, he's at I'm, this I'm, point I'm, probably I'm more. Tom Brady, dude. Well, no, no, no. I mean, Tom, yeah, 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 Tom Brady, especially in, like, the NFL world. But Russell Wilson, like, for only being in the league a couple of seasons now, you know, he's probably more recognizable than Drew Brees, like, just from, like, average people, depending on their relationship with the NFL. You know, like, if you took a whole sample from everybody in the country and showed them both of those men's faces and asked if they could identify either of them, um, I have a feeling Russell Wilson would win that uh, from Drew Brees. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to jump on the Carson Wentz bandwagon a little early. I think you're trying to go for, like, really kind of, like, fresh quarterbacks to be kind of really hitting their their prime in five years because I think that'll be beyond. Although the NFL with, like, the, the way that medicine is now and the way that they do the training and everything, they keep these quarterbacks shelf life. Like, it, it, their 30s is, like, part of their prime. Like, it's pretty impressive. So, um but, you know, I think you may be asking for somebody who's just, like, kind of really recent. And if I expect them to honestly assume those types of mantles, you talk about guys like Blake Bortles and, like, Grant Tannehills and, like, the wannabes on, like, the Redskins and, like, the Niners. So I would have to say Jameis Winston is a pretty obvious one. He's got, like, the leadership skills. Like, he went into a, the Florida locker room before their game. It was just recently, and like just hearing him hype him up, and like the leadership skills he has, he's gonna be, he's just not, he has very natural inclination for it. So this is something that comes naturally to him. He'll he'll be around for our NFL for his, you know, okay, but what for do you, a long time. What do you think? What do you think? Do you think Mariota is ever gonna come around and be the guy? Uh, yeah, I think he'd be solid. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be surprised if in five years he's like a very significant 
uh, part of the NFL. What would you? Still. What would? What? What? But it what, wouldn't be what shocked current, if he didn't. Present day quarterback. What would you compare that status to? Somebody who is just like a a good, serviceable, decent, solid quarterback, but is definitely not elite tier. Maybe an Alex Smith. Where would you put him? Yeah, I mean Alex Smith. It's just a system guy. Like he he doesn't really. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex Smith's probably a good place actually. Game manager area. Put Marcus Mariota. Okay. Oh, um, no. Okay, so uh, let's, good. let's move on to the next question. Let's move on to the final. I don't know about golf. I don't know about golf either. I mean, if they're starting Case Keenum, obviously. Uh, here's the next question. Um, what? Well, I heard real quick that that might be political. Sorry, because Jeff Fisher knows that if he starts losing games with him with golf, that he's going to get fired. Because that's like the only thing he has remaining to say. Oh, I, have, I, I haven't gone to golf yet. That's why we're losing. I haven't switched to golf. Then the question is, why the fuck didn't you switch to him? You still get fired. Jeff Fisher is the biggest Fish. sham, dude. I, do, I cannot for the life of me figure out how this dude has ridden uh, one to two successful seasons to being a head coach, to being a head freaking coach of an NFL team. Jeff Fisher should be the freaking defensive coordinator of, of a Division II school. That's where he fucking belongs. I don't know. I don't like Jeff. He knows, what he's, he knows, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. All right. Um. Uh. uh do Do you have anything you want to say about the upcoming? Or well, the last thing we got to talk about is the upcoming game. Buccaneers coming to town to play the Cardinals. Um. I mean, is is it is it obvious what you want to see, or is there anything else that you want to expand on what you'd like to see? Well, honestly, I think that our defense was just in our defensive backfield, but our defense in general, we were getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback. We were, like, dropping four and then, like, kind of going in and out of blitzing. And, like, I just think we should kind of just stick to what we've been doing until, like, our, our front core there really shows that they're able to, like, use technique and whatnot to, like, penetrate the offensive lines of our opponents. I kind of fear that we're going to play with some lackluster defenses like Tampa Bay and kind of look a little better. Um, and sort of do what we did last season where we really fell high on the team, and for good reason. I mean, going into Seattle and winning up there. But then, like, down the stretch, you could just sort of tell that we were really, like, our lesser competition. And then kind of grinding out one-score wins on, like, some of the other competition, which were... It felt like we're favorable matchups to us a lot, like at a prime time or in Arizona or something. And like, once we went and really faced our first, like, went go out to Carolina for the NFC Championship game, and because Green Bay was really banged up last year, if you remember, and then they almost just decided to take it to us in Arizona. Yeah. After pretty much just giving us the game near the end of the regular season. It made made, that game. That game made Jeff Janis, dude. Like that. That guy's a thing now because of that game. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So, so and then we go to Carolina and face, like, a, a reasonably healthy team, Sans, Calvin, Benjamin. And, like, they it, they beat the freaking bejesus out of us. Actually, and the so, only, like, only, only two players who played well, David Johnson and Drew Butler, incidentally, had a pretty good game. Right. And so David Johnson's going to do that. He seems like he's just the guy for this like the way that his demeanor is the way his work ethic is like the way he wears and looks in a suit he's geared to be a superstar and to be able to like wear that mantle properly so that he can have sustained success in that capacity but so that's why even after the game that we just lost to the Patriots he's just like I was already washed out I'm already moving forward because he had such a good game that it's like I mean, it wasn't the best, but like he, he almost he averaged played, five he, he yards played, a carry. He played really well, and um, uh, I, I I kept noticing that he would get that couple extra yards when you know when they hit the pile and usually they screech to a halt. DJ was getting a mm-hmm. couple more out of it, which is exactly what you got to do. The, I first of all, I never have been a fan of up the gut runs because of that, because all it is is yeah. you run into this wall of people and then you're stopped in your tracks. But some running backs can push through and get a couple more yards after hitting that pile. And David Johnson kept doing that. Not to mention that one freaking uh, beast mode type run where he freaking bounced off of a couple of guys. You thought he's going down and all of a sudden he's freaking takes it. What's like the five yard line or something. And David Johnson is insane. Um, so, uh, uh, Lutz, what, uh, okay. So 
uh, is, are there any specific things that you would say you want to see out of the Cardinals next week? Other than a win, of course. But are there any specific things? That Dude, you I'm have? waiting. I'm waiting for like a real pass rush. I'm okay. waiting for four sack game. That isn't like the Green Bay one where they're just sort of folding. But like we're actually. Are we? Are, know, we, like bl- are, we bl- are we blitzing a lot next week? Yeah, I mean, Tyrant's not really back up in the box yet again, and so, like, I don't know. He's a, he's a big part of the blitzing packages, so, like, I can't really say that we are as long as he's not ready to, like, fly into, like, the line. But we should just put Justin Bethel and Alex Okafor out there as sacrifices and just <laughs> throw them into the pile every time. All right. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to say because we're done? Bear, no. I don't say bear, no. All right, guys. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of Kyrie's Cards Cast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be sure to join us next week when we talk a little more about Plock like we did last week. Sorry that we didn't mention Plock this week. We'll get him in next week. Um, guys. Plock, guys. Plock. Plock. Lutz, did you see the Plock video I put up there of him playing the harmonica? Wasn't that badass? Um, That's so good. Everybody loved it. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for listening and watching and hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. Go, Cardinal! Go, Cardinal!